too much information packed onto the screen for you to watch out for. We'll just give you uh, the name of the player, a few brief stats uh, just indicating how their form was leading into the Australian summer, uh, how they went during 2021, which uh, might give some insights into why they've been awarded a wild card, that their reaction uh, for the wild card entry and how they think it'll uh, help their chances for the Australian summer. So we'll try and keep this as uh, short and sharp as possible for you because we've got a lot of information uh, to get through and if you're interested in any of the other players in any of the other tournaments It'll be easy to find just look for our wild cards playlist or our news bites bulletin uh, For the channel. We'll take a short 60 second break. Don't go away. We'll be right back That's the intro. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. It's great to have your company. Really appreciate uh, you taking time out of your, your Christmas New Year's break to uh, tune in to this Australian Open Life. And today we're shining a spotlight on the four Australians in the men's singles main draw who've been awarded wild cards for the Australian Open 2022. And if these names sound familiar, uh, we have covered them briefly in an earlier episode uh, where a couple of these guys were awarded wild cards over in South Australia. Uh, so let's get straight into it. Now, um, I recommend you keep your eyes peeled and your ears open. There'll be very little information on the screen. Uh, we're gonna bring you information, uh, some context uh, about the the players behind the stats, and, um, and being the uh, the afternoon of the 18th of January 2022, um, a couple of these guys have already played some success, uh, some uh, uh, well hearts broken, one could say. Uh, so the great thing is that even though uh, the viewer or the listener might perceive that we're a little bit behind, it works in our advantage because we can bring you up to date with those going through to the second round of the Australian Open and who their upcoming opponents are. And there are some juicy matches coming up on day three and day four of week one of the Australian Open.
So uh, let's see who the first wild card is, and it's a very happy Alexander Vukic, who has already played his first round match. So let's uh, just go through the usual uh, um, the usual uh, routine here. Let's just take a look at uh, Alexander's uh, brief details. Uh, he's uh, currently ranked 144 in the world. Now that's going to go up. Um, basically, uh, in fact, we have an update on his player bio, so this is uh, hot off the press. But first, we'll just look at his, um, we'll just look at Alexander's um, uh, last two uh, matches of. Well, actually, no, let's let's not do that. Let's look at his um, uh, uh, first couple of matches uh, tournaments in Adelaide rather than uh, going back to the last two matches like we usually do, the last two matches of 2021. So let's have a quick look. He participated in both uh, Adelaide tournaments uh, at Memorial Drive, one ending on the 9th of January, the other the 15th of January. Uh, the round of 32, uh, Alexander had a, a pretty uh, heavy workout, a three-set loss to the American Steve Johnson, no disgrace there, and he had three really solid matches. Wow. Let's have a look at who he played in the in the second tournament. He, he went through the round of 32, had a straight sets win uh, against uh, Alexander Bublik. Uh, that got through the round of 16, uh, Steve Johnson, and this time he got over Steve Johnson in straight sets. Well done, 6-4, 7-5. And then up against the eventual winner of that tournament, um, Tanasi Kokonakis, uh, lost in three tight sets. Um, uh, seven six three six two six. Uh, Kokonakis won that match. Um, so uh, uh, heading into um, the Australian Open, uh, Alexander Vukic would have liked his uh, chances. Would have had um, a lot of confidence out of uh, of that run. And then, uh, given the wild card as a uh, recognition of his uh, achievements, so. Uh, let's take a look at uh, his uh, player bio. Now, it's actually, um, there's a fresh update here um, from five days ago. So, um, some great achievements here that uh, Alexander Vukic broke into the top 200 in March 2020, just before the ATP tour was suspended due to uh, the breakout of COVID. Um, uh, he ended 2021 at a career high, number 156. And as we know, his current ranking, um, as stated uh, at the moment, now this isn't ta this isn't taking into account his uh, his uh, success uh, in the first round at the Australian Open. I'm giving the game away there, 144. So he's already improved uh, 12 spaces in the in the um, 12 places in the space of five days. My goodness. So he's qualified. Uh, at the 2018 Sydney tournament, the 2020 Roland Garros tournament. Uh, he had a great uh, achievement getting into uh, the 2021 Queen's Club tournament. Uh, also played at Indian Wells. My goodness, 2021 was uh, huge for him. He had his um, first ATP Tour win, uh, as I've already given the game away. Um, uh, just the other day, um, yesterday in fact, he also advanced to his third Challenger final of his career at the 2021 Champagne Tournament in the USA, where he was a three-time All-American and 2017 Big Ten Athlete of the Year for the University of Illinois. So uh, letting the cat out of the bag there, that he was um, uh, well, probably on a tennis scholarship there. So let's just take a look uh, who he's coming up against. Um, he defeated uh, um, the South African um, I'll just click through to see this chap's first name to be um, to be polite and respectful. Lloyd Harris of South Africa, ranked 30 in the world. What an amazing win in two hours 55 minutes out on uh, court three. Um, a good place to uh, start your, um, your, your grab your um, debut Grand Slam win that he got through in four sets. Alexander Vukic uh, in the first round of the Australian Open, four six. 6-3, 7-5, 7-6, a tight fourth set there, getting up seven points to three in the tie break. And uh, we'll round out this little segment that uh, uh, in the next round, uh, Alexander Vukic, as a wild card, is meeting a player who is a qualifier. 
uh, in the second uh, has made it through the second round as well. As well, it's Radu Albo uh, from Moldova, <laughs> tennis powerhouse. There, uh, the the Moldovan player uh, is 123 in the world as we speak. That bloke is a right-handed. Um, uh, a right-handed player, and I can tell you he's no slouch with the racket. Hey, check this out, he's won four million, just over four million US. <laughs> US, oh, it's great money if you can get it. Um, and uh, his singles loss record is 86 wins, 118 losses. So this bloke um, uh, is uh, gonna be, I tell you what, if I was Alexander Vukic, I'd fancy my chances against uh, against this Mold Moldovan. A qualifier playing a wild card entry in round two of the Australian Open. Uh, so we're going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to put in some footage uh, from uh, some of the uh, regional and uh, wheelchair open tournaments, the lead up tournaments that we attended and grabbed some footage and uh, checked out some of the action. And we're also going to dip into the sights, the sounds, the summer of tennis. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Before we do, let's just see what uh, Alexander Vukic, uh, uh, just some other things, has he got a reaction? Uh, no, they, do. they didn't give him a chance to uh, speak, anyway. Okay, welcome back. Uh, our second player that we're showcasing in this episode is Chris O'Connell. Uh, scored his first top 50 win at last year's Australian Open. We beat Jan Leonard Struff uh, to, to get into the second round. He also advanced to a first ATP quarter final and even qualified for Wimbledon during 2021, did Chris O'Connell. Uh, so let's just check out his form, the player behind the stats. Uh, his last two uh, tournaments, 
2021. He played in uh, Bahrain, where he lost in the round of 32 to Ryan Penniston in three sets, 7-6, 3-6, 6-7. He, uh, 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 he also had a, a brief run through two rounds into the round of 16 at Bergamo, Italy, losing to Zednek Kola. Uh, I think that's uh, Croatian, that flag. Um, uh, another three sets lost, 7-5, 6, 7, 5, 7. So Christopher knocking on the door um, of uh, becoming um, a, uh, a, a highly ranked player for Australia. He's currently ranked 175 in the world, playing right-handed, one-handed backhand. There it is, the one-handed backhand. You don't see many of the, those around these days. Now, his, um, his bio makes interesting reading as at last August. Uh, actually, it's only of August 2020. Um, he has been as high as 114 in the world um, and had a, uh, a loss in uh, the first round at the Australian Open as a wild card. Um, and he got into the top 200 originally in September 20, uh, 2019. Um, so we won't go back too far there, but uh, what we're interested in is um, uh, his progress in the Australian Open. So let's get to the juicy stuff um, uh, without any mucking around. Christopher has won his uh, opening round one match out on court eight. At, uh, at this week's Australian Open. Uh, winning in two hours, 38 minutes, he played the Frenchman, Frenchman, uh, Hubert Gaston, Hugo Gaston, in three sets, uh, that's four sets, a very good effort by the wild card, making great use of the uh, opportunity that's been put before him. Um, a very tight first set, 7-6, uh, winning 7-4 in the first set, then uh, cleaned him up. The Frenchman uh, got well cleaned up um, in the second set, six love. Um, a slight uh, fight back from the Frenchman, four six in the third. And then Christopher O'Connell just uh, switched, up a gear, switched up a gear and went six one in the fourth, a great effort. So he'll um, uh, uh, be feeling pretty chuffed about that. And, uh, and that confidence level that um, he'll have uh, achieved with that win, he'll need all the confidence he can get because he's up against the wily Argentinian, Diego Schwartzman, world ranking number 13 in the world. Uh, Diego is one of the, the feistiest players on the pro ATP circuit. He gets around the court like nobody's business, so Chris O'Connell has got his work cut out for him. But wouldn't you fancy your chances in round two of any Grand Slam tournament when you're a wild card? Uh, you've acquitted yourself well in the first round. Um, and, uh, and who knows uh, what sort of shape Diego Schwartzman is, because all these players, don't forget, uh, besides what they've all had to deal with in the last uh, nearly, well, it's two years now, um, they've all had to deal with uh, quarantine and vaccinations and uh, all the rigmarole that, that comes with the current circumstances in the world. And uh, uh, Diego coming from Argentina, uh, I'd, I'd fancy my chances uh, if I was holding a racket in round two at the Australian Open with uh, a really good four set win under my belt. Don't go away, we will be right back. Enjoy some of the sights, sounds, summer of tennis at Melbourne Park, January 2022.
you're listening to This Australian Open Life, I'm the bloke who walks, and our third player that we're profiling in this uh, special showcase episode of the Spotlight series, uh, the uh, men's ATP main draw uh, wild cards, the Australians uh, who are looking to make the most of the, an op a great opportunity to get their, uh, their summer. Uh, well, we're well into it now, of course. Um, Alex Bolt, and uh, we profiled Alex uh, for the uh, for the Adelaide International, uh, of course. So, uh, if uh, you're a keen listener of this Australian Open Life, you'd know that Alex Bolt had a career best year in uh, 2021. He's 29, but he's uh, he's maturing into a, a very fine player, Alex Bolt. Uh, he had an impressive. Um, Australian Open over the past three years. His best AR result is a third round run in 2019. He's currently ranked 152 in the world. He had a great run at Adelaide. Uh, let's just switch this up a bit uh, to the 2022 uh, results. We're just swapping that over now. Uh, just chat amongst yourselves. Um, so in Adelaide, uh, he played uh, two matches in each Adelaide tournament and uh, unfortunately uh, lost each match in straight sets um, uh, in the round of 32, losing to one. One man, well, Cheridolo and Steve Johnson, that name keeps popping up, doesn't it? So Alex um, uh, broke into the top 200 for the first time in 2014 and uh, he actually peaked at number 125 in 2019. Um, so hopefully he hasn't, you know, found a plateau that he's never going to advance past. Uh, but he did, he did uh, compete his first ATP uh, to a quarterfinal at South Australia uh, last year as a wild card, and he actually saved four match points to defeat the world number 30 Gilles Simon in five sets, which ended up being the biggest win of his career to date, to which reach the uh, Australian Open third round. That was when he was a wild card. Um, so uh, looking at Alex, uh, his uh, his uh, dance. Card uh, he's still not uh, as of uh, 3.30 on uh, 3.30 in the afternoon of Tuesday the 18th of January we're into day two the afternoon of day two of the uh, Australian Open he still hasn't played his first round match he is up against the uh, and I'm pretty sure this is uh, uh, yep yeah, Spaniard uh, is uh, the Spaniard being uh, Davidovich Vakina, uh, Alexandro, Alejandro, of course. Uh, how could I forget Alejandro? Um, so that's uh, he's not seated, Alejandro Davidovich Vakina, and uh, Alex Bolt with the wild card. So I uh, don't know what time that match starts, but by the time you hear this episode, that uh, match will be run and won. And he's also um, playing in the men's doubles. Uh, you might be interested to know, and I can't believe why, is that Alex Bolt and uh, and Maccabee, they are up against the special K's have reteamed for the men's doubles of the Australian Open 2022. Tanasi Kokonakis, he's going to saddle up next to Nick Kyrgios in the doubles. I didn't know they were doing that, so <laughs> it's great news. I'm just giggling because... Uh, well, um, they're, they're not, they're, they're, uh, they've known each other for years, the special case, and uh, they're a pretty good double act, but um, we'll see how, that, how we go. And speaking of seeing how we go, see how you go with, uh, with these images and, and uh, sounds, sights, sounds of summer of tennis. Uh, we'll be right back after the next break for the final segment.
Welcome back to this final segment of the uh, Spotlight series. This is actually our final crack at uh, checking out the wild cards for the, uh, the summer of tennis at the home of the Australian Open, given out to uh, Australian players for the main draw of the men's singles at the 2022 Australian Open. And uh, we, uh, we dropped his name in, in uh, just before the last break. And uh, it's uh, the, uh, the special K that we uh, do like talking about, Tanasi Kokonakis, currently ranked 103 in the world, fighting back after years of injury. The right-handed, two-handed backhand player uh, has been really, uh, um, really unlucky with uh, so many injuries over the last uh, six to seven, eight years. Um, it's great to see him back and uh, uh, during those injury ridden years in the, um, in the recent years he actually had a great quarter final win I think it was in Dubai against Roger Federer so he, you know the kid well he's not a kid anymore he's 25 but the kid knows he can play and compete at this highest level he went through uh, five uh, really, really testing matches at the Adelaide International, um, beating a Frenchman and American. Oh, he beat John Isner in the second round at Adelaide. I didn't know that. Um, got over Marin Cilic in the semi-finals and beat the Frenchman Arthur Rind Rindeneck in three tight sets. Uh, uh, getting home in a comfortable 6-3 win in front of friends and family at Memorial Drive. So uh, Tanasi had a great uh, boost in his confidence. Uh, there, he's uh, uh, a former top 10 junior um, who uh, had his first ranking point eight days after his 15th birthday. I still remember him being brought in as a substitute to play with Serena Williams in the Hopman Cup in Perth. He was just 16. That's where it was. So he beat uh, defending champion uh, Roger Federer in the 2018 Miami Open in the second round as 175th ranked qualifier and he was the lowest ranked player to beat a world number one since <laughs> since the number 178 Clever beat Leighton Hewitt it was defeated by the world number 178 uh, the Frenchman Clever at the 2003 Miami Open in the second round um, so yeah, Tanasi he's, uh, he's got what it takes and uh, if he can just lay off the uh, <laughs> if he can just lay off the arm curls and uh, and all that other uh, um, gym junkie type activity uh, to let his <laughs> just give his body a chance. Um, I'm sure there's still plenty left in the in the tank for him uh, to make the most of things. But unfortunately, um, yep, no on this occasion this year, uh, Tanasi and we can update you with his first round result. And we slightly gave it away before that in two hours and seven minutes. Um, Tanasi Kokonakis, the wild card entry, unfortunately lost in straight sets uh, to the German Hanfman, uh, who was also a qualifier actually, um, lost in straight sets 6-2, 6-3, 6-2. So all we can say is uh, Tanasi <laughs> wish you all the best in the doubles, trying to uh, keep control and keep uh, Nick Kyrgios on the, on the straight and narrow in your doubles adventures uh, throughout the next week and a half. Um, it's just worth noting, we're just going to go slightly off topic here, which we didn't do for the girls, but there's a lot of extra information here um, for the men's singles, main draw wild cards. Um, there's been uh, uh, seven or eight no, given out overall. So besides the four Australians, it might interest you to know that Andy Murray, we spoke about him in an earlier episode, uh, the UK player, 100, uh, ranking of 134. Another wild card given to the Frenchman, Louis, Lu, uh, Lucas Pouet. Uh, he's currently 155 in the world. The American Stefan Kozlov, 159 in the world. And finally, from Chinese Taipei, <laughs> how good is that? Um, 188 in the world, Zheng Chun Zin. So uh, good, look, good luck to all those guys. Um, some other qualifying singles cards we did go through. Uh, uh, the standout name there is uh, Rinki Hijikata and Dane Sweeney, Philip Selkirk and uh, James McCabe, Edward Winter. We wish all those guys uh, all the best of luck with their wild card chances. And that, uh, that's where we can uh, finish off here uh, with this uh, uh, deep dive into the wild cards that have been handed out throughout the Australian summer. 
Um, thanks for listening. We really appreciate your interest. Um, we hope your favourite player uh, gets, um, gets the best success possible throughout this Grand Slam and all the others, plus Indian Wells. Uh, and uh, enjoy the sights, sounds of summer, and uh, see you on the other side of this break. So uh, that about wraps it up. Hope you enjoyed that that very rudimentary summary. <laughs> I'm not going to pat myself on the back about the, qu the quality of this episode. Um, it was really just about bringing together all those names uh, of all those players and uh, just letting you know that that's where things are at. Because, uh, you know, we live in a digital age, but it's actually sometimes not that easy to find all this, this information. And the Christmas New Year's break, I mean, who wants to spend all their time uh, looking at endless streams of uh, apps and websites and, um, you yeah. <laughs> So let us do all the hard work for you. Uh, that's what we're here for. And um, it's so um, very much appreciated that uh, we're finding out that uh, from most of the viewers, uh, whether it's by comments or likes or subscriptions, that uh, this Australian Open Life is uh, hitting the mark for you. You've been listening to The Bloke Who Walks. This was our Wild Cards episode of the Spotlight series. Have a great new year. Thanks for listening and we'll chat to you very soon. Bye for now. Based in Melbourne, Australia, this Australian Open Life is produced by Wise Words Media and Calumny Films.